Well, good morning, friends. It's good to be together, together today. Um, my name is John Gallagher, and I'm the lead pastor here at Embrace. And I'm just grateful that we get to spend this time together. Um, I know it's raining outside, and our plans to kind of do our morning, outdoor friends. worship. Oh, there's my together phone again today. making noise on me. Um, I know that our plans to go outside and have worship together in person were thwarted by all the rain this morning, but I'm still happy that we have this platform here online so that we can worship together safely. Um, we're just going to begin by singing. And so, you know, I encourage you as we're singing this first song, really start to prepare yourself, um, prepare your space, prepare your mind, prepare your heart, um, prepare your spirit um, so that you can connect with God. Because I, I think it actually takes a little more effort um, when we're worshiping online like this. Um, and so I encourage you guys just to do whatever it takes. You know, we we can make excuses and we can say, this doesn't work for me. I can't connect with God through this. But the reality is, like, God is here. God is with you. Um, God is in your home, um, on your walk, wherever you're at worshiping right now. And so, God, you can connect with God and you can connect with us. Um, but it's going to take some effort. It's going to take doing whatever it takes to really dig in um, and make the most out of this experience. And so um, I'm going to turn it over to Chris and Christina and they're going to lead us in some music. So let's worship together. Well, 
if you've just joined us, um, my name is John Gallagher. I am the lead pastor at the church, and Chris um, Adkins was leading us in worship as our worship leader, and then Christina Osborne, our associate pastor, um, also leading in worship today. So we are excited and grateful that we get to um, lead in this way each week and help usher you all into the presence of God and also help you connect with one another. What we're going to do right now um, as we continue to worship is we're going to connect with one another through sharing. And one thing we've been doing really throughout much of the pandemic is we've been sharing what we're praising this morning and what we're protesting. It's that tension between gratitude and lament, you know, that that in many ways we're experiencing joy, we're experiencing good things, we're seeing God's goodness. But on the other hand, we're also seeing lots of suffering and pain and hardship. And many of us are even personally experiencing that. So we're living in that tension and that's life, you know, that's what life is like. And so we're I'm going to connect with one another in the comments through sharing. Um, What are you praising this morning? What are you praising God for? And then also, what are you protesting this morning? What are you lamenting? What is something hard going on that you just want to speak um, and share with the group? It could be personal. It could be related to the community. It could be just something on your heart. Um, But let's interact right now and fill up the comments with some vulnerability and some honesty and some goodness. And so let's continue to worship as we do that.
so much for um, sharing in the comments and continue to do that as we move through our time together. Um, feel free to share, be vulnerably open about what's going on um, with you and kind of what you're uh, dealing with, what you're grateful for. Um, interact as much as you want. That's the cool thing about online church is you can talk all throughout church uh, and it's encouraged and it actually works with the platform. And so uh, feel free to interact in, in those ways as we move through all this. Um, if you've just joined us recently, my name is John Gallagher. I'm the lead pastor here at the church, and I just want to say welcome um, to each of you. If you are visiting with us this morning, um, then I particularly want to say welcome to you. I'm so glad that you found this, whatever way you did, through this online platform, and I hope that you feel welcomed and right at home and a part of our family. Um, Embrace is a diverse group of uh, Gritty Christ followers is what we call ourselves, and we are committed to Jesus and the kingdom, and we want to see um, the kingdom of God in our community um, in real and tangible ways. And so we, we try to be vulnerable and honest with one another, and we truly try to risk real life together. And so um, welcome. You're part of our family if you're worshiping with us this morning, and so thank you for being here. Um, I've got a couple of quick announcements. If you don't mind, uh, share this stream. Um, many of you have probably already done that. Um, I think you've kind of gotten that that's an important thing. But I'm telling you, um, multiple times throughout this pandemic, many people have said that they found our church and they actually consider this their church now um, through finding it online. And much of that is because you all share um, and put it out there. And so it just, Facebook works that way. The more you share it, the more you comment, it gets out to more people, more people may tap in and join what we're doing. Uh, so if you don't mind, uh, that'd be awesome if you could do that. Um, also, I want to let you know that if you would like to give financially to support uh, the ministry of Embrace and, and all the, the good things that are happening in this church, um, then you can do that. Um, I'll put the link. You can do that at embraceyourcity.com backslash give, and that'll have all the information you need. You can mail checks um, in the mail. Uh, you can also give online. We have a secure giving platform that we use online where you can do recurring or one-time gifts. And so thank you for your generosity, and thank you for supporting um, the work here at Embrace. We can't do it without um, each of you pitching in and making this possible. And then let me check to see what else we have. Today we were going to start our outdoor worship service on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Um, and we're still doing our online service at 11. This is not going to change um, for the foreseeable future. But we were adding an outdoor service at 9, but we had lots of rain this morning and so we kind of got washed out and weren't able to do that um, so I was a little bit sad that our first one got rained out. Hopefully it's not a bad sign of things to come with weather. 
Uh, but we'll plan on being here next week at 9 a.m. And then we'll also have the online service at 11. It'll be the same message at both of them and same music, um, just a little bit different vibe, a little bit different elements. Um, we'll continue doing a Wonder Room story um, on Sunday mornings at the online service. And so for kids, we're going to have our Wonder Room story each Sunday. And so um, in just a moment, we'll watch our Wonder Room story. But I just want to um, just thank you guys again for all the things you're sharing. I'm seeing a lot of um, lamenting, a lot of protesting this morning. There's a lot of really difficult stuff going on. And so um, please connect with one another over that. Speak it out. Um, lament it. Pray it to God. Um, we're going to spend a little bit of time praying um, after our Wonder Room story, but um, if you've got specific prayer requests, you can throw those in. And when we go through our prayer time, I'm going to give a chance for you guys to pray for one another um, in silence, and then I'll say a prayer over all of us. And so what I'm going to do now is update our Wonder Room calendar. Um, it is behind me. It's already updated. I'm just going to show you where you're at. You can kind of see it behind my head here. And so um, you'll see our arrow is pointing here. Um, we're maybe, and I don't even know how many greens we have. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, Sunday after Pentecost. So we're moving along, and we're getting closer to Advent, and Advent will be here before we know it, and then we'll be at Christmas. And so that's where we're at here on our calendar for the church year. And what we're going to do now is watch our story this morning, our Wonder Room story. And so as you see the story, as you hear it, um, Put your wonderings in the comments. What are you wondering? What questions do you have? What things stick out to you? What are the kind of the questions, but also the things you love, the insights you have? Kids, I really want to hear from you. All right, so tell your parents or you get the phone or whatever yourself and you type out uh, what you're wondering this morning so that we can wonder a little bit together after the story. So I'm going to put on our Wonder Room story and then after that we'll sing a song together. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to the Wonder Room. Today, we're going to hear more of a story we began last week. We'll back up a little bit so you remember what's happening, and then we'll hear how it ends. So take just a moment to get yourself ready. Remember when the people of God came into the land of Egypt, they found food and work. But then the Pharaoh trapped them. They could not go home again. They had to do what the Pharaoh said. They had to live where the Pharaoh said. They had to get up when the Pharaoh said, and go to bed when the Pharaoh said. They had to eat what the Pharaoh said. They had to do the work the Pharaoh said. They had to do everything the Pharaoh said. They were slaves. One of the people, whose name was Moses, came to the Pharaoh and said, Let my people go. The Pharaoh said no. Moses went back many times to the Pharaoh to say, let my people go. But the Pharaoh always said, no. Then many strange things happened in the land, but the Pharaoh always said, no. Then something terrible happened. The oldest boy in each Egyptian family, even in the family of the Pharaoh, died. The oldest boys in the families of the people of God did not die because the people made a mark on the doors of their houses. They put the blood of a lamb there, and the angel of death passed over them. When Moses went back this time and said, let my people go, the Pharaoh said yes. The people began to hurry to get everything ready. They packed all they could carry and they baked bread for the journey. There was no time to put leaven in the bread and let it sit so it would swell up and get big and fluffy like the bread you buy in the store. It was flat. You can still eat this bread today. It is called matzo and served every Passover. Whenever you taste it, you can still taste this story. The people went as fast as they could. They were afraid the Pharaoh would change his mind. Suddenly, they heard the sound they did not want to hear. The ground began to shake. The Pharaoh's army was coming after them. The beating of the horse's hooves and the rolling of the chariots sounded like thunder. The army of Pharaoh 
pushed the people against the water. They did not know what to do. God came so close to Moses, and Moses came so close to God that he knew how to make the people go through the water into freedom. This one looks so scared, he can barely move. This one is running. This one is happy. This one is confused. When all the people were safe on the other side, the water closed behind them and they were free. The army of the Pharaoh could not get them. Now all of the people were free on the other side. They were so happy they just had to give thanks to God and Miriam led the dancing. I wonder what part of this story you like the best. I wonder what part of this story you think is the most important. What else do you wonder? Type it in the comments below and we'll wonder together after this song.
Amen. Amen. What would I'd like to do, we're going to kind of look over some of the comments y'all are putting in there about the Wonder Room story. But before that, I'd just like to spend a little bit of time in prayer. And so what I'd love to do is give you guys a chance uh, to kind of pray over the, the things that are being talked about in the comments. And so, you know, I encourage you to kind of scroll through, see what people have shared throughout the service. And, and as you read it, just maybe say a short prayer over that particular comment. And so I'm just going to give us kind of a moment of, of quiet and silence. And, you know, silence in your house may be uh, not so quiet right now. But, um, but wherever you're at, just try to take a moment of quiet. And kids, if y'all, y'all think about kids, what, what it is maybe you need prayer for. And just close your eyes and say a simple prayer to God, asking God to, to help with whatever's on your heart and whatever's on your mind right now. So let's take a moment of quiet. And I'm going to let you guys pray for one another um, and, and pray over the things people are sharing. And then get those in your mind, write them down if you can, and then pray over those this week as well. So let's bow our heads and just spend a moment in silence and, and you all pray as you need to. And then after that, I'll close us and then we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. So God, we come to you right now, and no matter where we are, we're all praying together. Um, and God, I pray that you would unite us, that you would join us together in your great love as we connect with one another through prayer, that through this we would connect, that we would experience healing power. So God, I pray you would hear our prayers right now. Take a few more moments, scroll back through, see what people are sharing, and lift up those requests. There's prayers of sickness, there's injustice, division. Prayers for safety. Prayers for peace. For wildfires, for all the things. Go back and find those and lift those up in prayer now. Pray for the person by name, even if you don't know them. Speak their name and pray for them right now. God, there's so much on our hearts right now. There's so much on our minds. We, we are being exposed to so much heartache, so much suffering, and so much pain as we scroll through our social media, as we look on, watch the news, as we watch sports, as we um, talk to our friends, as we travel through our community, as we read the newspaper, we're just being bombarded by so much hard stuff. And God, I know that, that many of us, we, 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 some of us want to just turn away from it and shut it all out because it's so overwhelming, but we know we can't just look away. And so, God, we're going to give it to you. We're going to keep coming back to you and putting these things at your feet. And, God, I pray that you would help every single one of us to know what small role we can play to bring peace and flourishing to our communities, to our families, to our friend groups, to our church, to our world. God, I pray that you would remind us as we face so much the enormity of problems, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to trust you and also that we could 
feel, God, the connection that we have to each other, that we would continue to press into relationship with each other, that you would remind us that we're not alone, that we're part of the body of Christ, that we have one another, that we all play a role, and that if we can work together in unity, that we can actually see the kingdom of God among us in our communities. God, I pray that you would help each of us as individuals to set aside our own just selfish ambition and gain and that we would care for the common good. God, I pray that you would convict us every time we try to cling to our own rights, to our own uh, desires, to our own whatever it is, God, that we would that we'd be convicted, Lord, and we would try to think about the the, the whole, that we would try to think about the good of, of, of all of the community and particularly focus on those who have been hurt and rejected and oppressed and put down. God, help us to be resilient. Help us to continue to persevere in working towards racial justice. Give us wisdom and discernment to know how to engage with people on these issues and, and help bring them along that, that we could um, have wisdom and discernment on how to call people in instead of only calling them out, that we could invite people in to a, a life of freedom from the wrong ways of thinking and, and, and invite people into the truth, the truth of peace and love and acceptance, Lord, and justice and compassion and mercy. We pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would consume us and that we would begin to see the fruits of the Spirit in our lives, that we would see the fruits of the Spirit in our churches, in our communities of love and joy. Oh, joy and peace and patience and kindness. We need more kindness and goodness and self-control. I pray that the fruit of the Spirit would be evident in our lives and that we would be convicted, Lord, by your Holy Spirit when it's not, and that we would repent and turn from those things, and that we would turn and walk in your ways, Lord. God, we need Jesus so much. We need Jesus, and we need you to heal us. Because if, we, if you don't heal us, then we know we're never going to find the healing that we need. Heal us, Lord. Heal us. Root out the disease and the sickness um, the, that's in our bodies, but also in our minds, and our systems, and our structures in America that you would root out the disease of racism and that you would show us what we can do to come alongside you in that. Root out the disease of bigotry and hatred. Root out the disease of, of materialism and ma militarism, and consumerism, and that, God, we could be people who, who truly find joy in following after you and following in your footsteps. God, we love you. God, I thank you for being with us in this time of prayer. Let's all join together wherever you're at and let's pray, pray this Lord's Prayer together. If you know it, then pray along. And if you don't, you can just hear this prayer as I say it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you all for spending just a little bit of time in prayer. Uh, sorry if I went a little long there, but God is just, um, we, we've got to be seeking the Lord in prayer. And I find that when I, when I take the initiative to actually sit down and do it, <laughs> that, that, that it's something that just brings me life and and purpose and direction. And so I encourage you to be seeking God in prayer this week. Let's be lifting one another up. What I want to do now is just look through some of your wonderings about our story of parting of the Red Sea. What a beautiful story. And so I'm just going to scroll back through and see um, some of the things that, that you guys had said about the story. I saw a lot of good stuff. And so it might take me just a moment to find where it starts. Um, Eric likes when, um, when, when God made the water go up. I think that's cool. It says there was a wall of water on each side. I mean, that, that had to be amazing to see. Some of y'all are pointing out the dancing as a celebration, right? That's a, um, 
a wonderful way to celebrate. You know, I'm not a good dancer, so I'm always reluctant. But um, I imagine if I was delivered from something like that, that I would be dancing to in, in my very uncoordinated way. Uh, Raylan wonders, why did Pharaoh chase after the people when he had already said, yes, you can go? Um, when he pushed them out? That's a great question. We're going to talk about that, Raylan. That's a great question. Um, Christy, I wonder how awesome that dance felt and how long they danced. I bet it, I bet it lasted a while. Um, Beckett thinks the slaves being trapped was the most important part because they couldn't get home. And his favorite part was when they went through the water because they got safe on the other side. Thank you, Beckett, for sharing that. Um, I think Beckett's going to be a preacher one day. Uh, Sally, I wonder how many times God opens ways for us. Do we dance and praise him or do we just take it for granted? Right? How many times has God opened the way and the path for us? And, and do we dance and praise him and give him gratitude or do we just kind of move on and take it for granted? I think we often just move on and take it for granted if I'm honest with myself. Um, Eva wonders why the Pharaoh changed um, his mind. Uh, Levi wonders how the ocean currents changed and the water folded to make the water part. Yeah, what was going on there? It says God summoned the wind. And, and so what happened with the currents? And uh, Levi's getting scientific on, the, uh, on us. I like it. And, and why did the Pharaoh change their mind? A couple of you kids are wondering that. That's a great question. Um, Paige thinks they probably danced till the sun come up the next day. Uh, they probably partied for a while. Uh, how was the water in there? Karen is wondering. What was the water like? Uh, was there any of it? Was it dry? Were they, what was it like? Yeah, I, I wonder why they forgot to thank God, why we forget to thank God for our freedom. That's right, Sue. Thank you for wondering that. I wonder that too. Um, I wonder what it was like to behold and witness the glory and miracle of the sea parting and knowing that God was setting them free. I mean, what did that feel like in that moment? I, I I don't know. I mean, that's so miraculous, so amazing. Um, and thank you guys for sharing some of your prayer requests as well and just um, praying along with me. I like to see the amen. So if y'all like something that's said or a comment or a, a scripture or whatever it is, type amen in there because we can't hear it in church. It's hard to have a much call and response going on uh, through online, but let's fill up the comments with that. That'll, that'll give me what I need to keep moving on here through this and, and, and summon the energy to, to preach uh, to a computer screen, even though I can't see your faces. Um, so we're going to move into our message for this morning. And so I, I'm just excited to share this story. It's a powerful story, and I'm excited to talk about it. So hundreds of years after the Israelites walked out of Egypt. All right, so we have this story, but hundreds of years later, after this beautiful story we just heard, the prophet Isaiah was still talking about it. Think about that. Hundreds of years later, the prophet Isaiah was still talking about this event. While the Israelites were in exile in Babylon, they'd been deported, kicked out of their country. They were living in Babylon, suffering, longing to be back home. Isaiah brought up this story and refreshed their memory about what God had done so long ago. And I'm going to show you the scripture here. He says, this is what the Lord says, saying this to the exiles hundreds of years later. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and the horses, the army and the reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished and snuffed out like a wick. Here's what the Lord says. That same God who did that for them says this now to the exiles in Babylon. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The story of liberation from so long ago about Egypt and Pharaoh and being set free still brought hope to the Jews living in exile in Babylon. Their future seemed bleak and hopeless, Yet Isaiah reminded them of another time when the future seemed bleak and hopeless. Yet the seas literally opened up for them to make a path to new life. 
I am doing a new thing, God said. I am making a way in the wilderness. Just like I did so long ago, I'm doing it again for you now. That story brought them hope, those living in exile. And it's funny because the Exodus story keeps popping up throughout history. Exodus is all throughout the Old Testament. It's referenced over and over and over again. Exodus is referenced in the New Testament over and over and over again. Exodus... All throughout our history, even today, all throughout history after the New Testament, when we hear about injustice and hopeless situations, the story of Exodus has given people hope. I mean, Christina brought up that that, um, that, that Harriet Tubman was actually called Moses, right? Because she freed people. This story of freedom and liberation has brought hope to suffering people for so long. You know, Walter Brueggemann, a brilliant Old Testament scholar, uh, he's my, if y'all have heard me preach about the Old Testament, you've heard me mention Walter Brueggemann, but he challenges us to look for Pharaoh in the news. And I think that's interesting uh, because Exodus politics, he says, are at work whenever there is a predatory economy, when the big ones eat the little ones, when the people in power take advantage of those without power. And as y'all read that, you're probably like, we see Pharaoh in the news right now today. We see Pharaoh in the news. We see it even in our own government, right? We find these same type of tactics being used even today. And, And God makes it clear, Christina, when she introduced all this, that God actually stands opposed to the death dealing empire. And God is all about peace and flourishing and bringing that freedom into our communities. And you know, somehow this story has given hope to people facing impossible situations where the future seems bleak. These words of Isaiah uh, can even offer hope to us today as we're facing a lot of challenges. See, I'm doing a new thing and I believe God is doing a new thing. It's springing up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God is up to something new. And when something new is coming, then a lot of forces want to oppose that. And I think we're experiencing a lot of that right now. But God is making a way in the wilderness. This can be hope for us, hope for a better future. This hope is grounded in real events of liberation that happened long ago. This is not wishful thinking. This is not just optimism. This is hope that is grounded in real life events that happened in history where God rescued people from impossible situations. After the 10th plague, the Israelites uh, started their journey out of Egypt. And, and, and it was a long journey, all right? They didn't get to the Red Sea within a very short time. It would have taken them a long time to travel there because they didn't choose the shortest path. They actually took a path around the desert toward the Red Sea so they could avoid encountering the Philistines, who would have been another problem for them. And they weren't like, we're not getting taken in captivity again. And so we're like, we're going to avoid the Philistines and we're going to go this other path. And the Lord was leading them with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night to show them the path to go. Just imagine the excitement they must have felt as they marched together toward freedom. You know, I can just hear them singing freedom songs. I can hear them rejoicing, this mixed multitude of all these different people from all over the place who had joined together and were marching towards freedom. So the Lord led them to camp out by the Red Sea. And while they set up camp at the Red Sea, Pharaoh, you know, at some point he had experienced some dread about his decision. Some of the kids were wondering, why did he change his mind? Well, let's wonder together. I wonder. He had an economy that was built on free labor and They were producing a lot, right? And they required a lot of their slaves. So I imagine him after he set a bunch of his slaves free, going out and checking out the labor camps and the factories and the fields and noticing, hey, there are not that many people working out here like there once was. We're not producing as much as we once were. 
And he maybe realized, I wonder, did, did I make a bad decision by letting them go? Perhaps he wondered if he had made an awful decision. He let his free labor walk away. And so perhaps he decided, man, I need them back because this is what I'm all about. This is the way we function in my society. And so he called upon his best warriors, his version of the Navy SEALs, and they hopped on their chariots and they made their way toward the Red Sea. They're like, nah, this ain't gonna work. You know, if you study history in America, actually after slavery, after the slaves were given freedom, many slave owners, many powerful realized that they had lost their free labor. And so they started arresting uh, black people for crimes that really didn't mean much of anything. They made up laws, vagrancy laws, all sorts of things that basically criminalized being black. And so they started arresting them. And then they had their slaves back because the amendment there to the Constitution gave them the right to enslave prisoners. And so they found a way to lock them up and put them back to work. Pharaoh, in many ways, experienced a lot of dread, I imagine. And so he's like, nah, I can't let my slaves go free. We need their work, right? So the Israelites were feeling bold and proud and courageous. And, and they were feeling good. But then they looked over and they saw Pharaoh and his special ops team approaching them, ready to take them back into slavery. And they were terrified. And, and they're like, what on earth, Moses? Why did you bring us out here? Was it because, here's what they said, and, and they're just experiencing so much dread. They said, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? I mean, hear the drama, this, the, the intense fear. What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Why did you bring us here? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians. And they said, it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die out here in the desert. They're coming for us. And we have no way of defending ourselves, right? They're terrified. The Israelites, they were hopeless again. <laughs> They've been singing the freedom songs, but now they were struggling. Their future was like, it was closed to them. There was no hope for survival. You know, in the, in the three statements they made, that I just put on the screen, they mention Egypt or the Egyptians five times. They're like, Egypt, Egyptians, they're coming. Egypt, Egyptians, they're coming for us. We're gonna die. And you know who they left out though, out of their statements that they made. And this is understandable, but you know who they forgot when they were talking about their situation? They forgot about their God, who had just done all this miraculous stuff freed them, and they forgot about God. We can't judge them because we forget about God all the time, and we just see the challenging situation right in front of us, right? But they forgot to mention God. Moses essentially responds like this to them. He says to them, okay, yes, Egypt is powerful. Yes, powerful, mighty warrior Egyptians are coming for us, the best of the best. Yes, it is frightening. Yes, we cannot defend ourselves, but... Yahweh, but God. You know, it's a little cheesy. I say, I hear people say, but God. You know, it sounds a little cheesy, but I think it's true, right? Because if you put God back into the equation, then things can change. But what happened is Moses is basically saying to them, you left somebody out of this equation. Because here's what their situation, if y'all like math here with me, bear with me for a second. Um, but here's was their equation. Powerful Israelites, or powerless Israelites, they didn't have any power, they, they didn't have any skill, or weapons, they couldn't fight. Powerless Israelites, plus powerful Egyptians, plus Red Sea blocking our way, what's that equal? That's going to equal slavery and or death, right? It's going to equal one of those bad things are going to happen, right? That was the equation that they had in their minds. But Moses offered another equation that's a slight variation and, and if y'all like, like, you know, math with me, you'll understand how I bracketed, put the parentheses around. Powerless Israelites plus powerful Egyptians plus Red Sea blocking our way. Yeah, that, you add that all together. That's pretty awful. Plus you add in Yahweh, you add in their God. That actually changes the equation. That equals new life for the Israelites. 
all right? That's a totally different equation. And Moses tells them this, all right? He says, do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. I mean, it's bold. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. He's basically saying, all right, stop freaking out. God's brought you through so much. He's not going to abandon you right now. Be still and watch what God is about to do. I mean, imagine the courage Moses had to have in this moment, right? <laughs> to just step into this and, and to say, okay, I'm having faith. And, and Moses showed a lot of courage. And what happened is the Lord ended up coming through. He summoned one of his powerful weapons. The Lord has the wind on his side, and the wind can be very powerful. I've sat through hurricanes. It can be very, very powerful. This wind was probably even more. And, and he, the, the wind was so powerful, it blew the waters so that a path emerged in the sea. It says that there was a wall of water on the left and a wall of water on the right, and the Israelites walked right on through to their new future in life together with God. And as the Egyptians pursued them, God caused the waters to engulf them, and they all died. All these warriors who were pursuing them, trying to kill the Egyptians. And because of what God did for them, they dedicated their lives to following Yahweh. And we read about this new community committed to serving God in the upcoming chapters. And we're going to get into that over the next few weeks. What's this new community look like? What do they, what is they, what do, they do now that they've been freed? How do they now set up life together? You know, um, the Exodus story has become a paradigm, really. A paradigm is kind of like a model of faith throughout history. And, and it's because, like, it's so relevant to our lives. Like, the Exodus story is so relevant to our lives, and particularly those who suffer. Right, People have noticed a pattern that has been repeated time and time again since the Exodus. And I'm going to show you what this pattern is, this paradigm. There's a situation of distress. That, that then, then comes the unexpected deliverance from God. And then from there, there is a response to that deliverance in community. And that's what we find in the story of Exodus. All right? Situation of distress unexpected deliverance and response in community. All people experience situations of distress. If you live, to live is to suffer in many ways, right? I mean, we struggle. Times, those times in our lives when we feel like Israel at the Red Sea, a lot of us have faced those moments where the future just seems hopeless. Um, it seems like there's no chance we're going to make it through. And, and we experience this in our personal lives, but we also experience this as communities, um, I think about this church, uh, used to be called Epworth, and, and Epworth almost closed. Uh, we almost closed 18 years ago. Uh, many thought that it was over for the church because of the struggles that they had faced financially and just the place that it had come. And, and there was a lot of grief and anxiety and anger. Um, and, and even in those moments, people looked for others to blame, and, and, and the future seemed hopeless at that point. But the Exodus faith tells us that there's no such thing as a hopeless situation. The future is actually never shut because God brings unexpected deliverance. God does this time and time and time and time again. Exodus faith, it's a bold, courageous faith. It's a hoping against hope. It's a uh, kind of an idea of being a prisoner of hope as, as Desmond Tutu likes to talk about. Exodus faith shows us that through God, there is always a way into the future. And it's a hard faith to have, but it's a faith we've got to fight for right now. We've got to cultivate that faith through prayer and through connection and community because we need Exodus faith right now. Because Exodus faith tells us that there's always hope, even when things seem hopeless. Exodus faith tells us that new futures are indeed possible. Jesus has exit, had Exodus faith. Mary had Exodus faith. Paul had Exodus faith. We need this kind of faith. And so when God then shows up and delivers us, all right, the unexpected deliverance, a response is always necessary. You can't be delivered and not respond. 
Like you got to respond in gratitude, right? We have to then be transformed and live differently because we experience God's saving work. You know, I see this paradigm in my life. Um, we can find this personally. I was once what I would say a, a slave to fear, as the song says. Um, my fears and my feelings of inag- inadequacy kept me from being who God wanted me to be. And it was true all the way through college. Um, I felt this way in my life. I felt called to ministry in high school, yet I kind of wrote it off uh, because I felt inadequate. I had little hope that I could do what God called me and wanted me to do and what I wanted to do. Yet about 14 years ago, I would say, um, year 2006, and then after um, God showed up for me in unexpected ways, and I experienced deliverance from many of my fears. And and I still have fear, but God has delivered me from so much. And I knew then that after that, I had to step out in faith and I had to start living differently. And and so I had to respond in community. And I'll say I'm pastoring a church now, um, even though I believe never believed I could do anything like this. There's a situation of distress, unexpected deliverance, and response in community. All right, remember that. We... I'm going to go even further. We see this in Jesus, all right? On the cross, Jesus identifies and experiences the greatest of human despair, pain, and hopelessness. As he hung on the cross and after he died, the world gave up hope for new life and change. His followers, they went dejected. They thought it was over, right? The Messiah, the Savior had been killed. Then three days later, what happened? unexpected deliverance came through the resurrection. Death did not have the final say. Jesus brought new life into a hopeless situation through the resurrection. The future was open again. New life was possible. And then at Pentecost, a new community is born. This new community, empowered by the Holy Spirit, now shares this wonderful news of Jesus' resurrection and the new future that opened up to the world. There was the crisis, the distress, the hopelessness, unexpected deliverance in the resurrection, then response and community at Pentecost and even through today. And in a sense, we're kind of living out this Exodus faith as Christians right now. We were once hopeless, thinking the future was shut. Then unexpected deliverance came through Jesus. Now we're somewhere in the wilderness, right? Waiting for God's final return when he sets it all right. You see, this story has so much truth in it. It is so profound. And that is why people continue to use it as a paradigm for their faith, a hope uh, as they kind of walk through this difficult wilderness that we travel through as we live this life. You know, we see pharaohs all over the news today, promoting death, working against God's purposes, We also experience the gods of Egypt wreaking havoc in our lives, causing pain, pushing us into despair and hopelessness. And we can focus all of our attention on the evil powers and principalities working against God, or we can try to be intentional to continue to refocus our attention on God and what God's plan is and what God can and wants to do through us as its church. God is more powerful. He is. I'm not... It's not just me saying that. I believe it. God is always greater. And with God, the future is open to us. One reason why we sing praise songs is we need to be reminded of how great God is. And it's hard to believe sometimes. It's hard to believe, but we got to continue to remind ourselves of that. Exodus faith. Exodus faith, y'all. That's what we need. It tells us that hope is never lost, that new life is always possible, and that no situation is ever too dark. Hear these words from the Lord in Isaiah. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're going to share communion today. And communion is a reminder of that Exodus faith. Jesus often compared in many ways to what Moses did, the liberating work Moses did, um, that God did through Moses, we we see in Jesus 
on the cross and the resurrection and through the working of the Holy Spirit. It says in Scripture, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So a freedom movement, <laughs> the freedom from pe- being people that are oppressed, it's a Holy Spirit movement. The freedom wind is blowing and the freedom wind wants to blow through our communities and, and often it's the church that we're carrying the Holy Spirit through us um, if we're willing to tap into the Spirit's work and, and allow ourselves to be used by the Spirit in this world. And communion reminds us that we're not alone. Communion reminds us of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Communion reminds us of the power of the resurrection. And communion reminds us of the Holy Spirit's ongoing work in our lives. So if you'd like to share communion with me as I do, um, all together, then we can do that in just a moment. Get your food ready. Get your drink ready. God's spiritual presence is there with us as we share communion. He transcends this uh, video camera and the internet cables and all that. The Spirit can meet you right where you're at and be present in these common elements. Whatever you have, the food and drink, God can work in and through you through these common things. I'm just going to say a short prayer over these elements and then we'll share communion together. God, thank you for loving us. We thank you that you are with us. May this bread and this juice, whatever food that folks have, food and drink, be for us the body and blood of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these common things, these ordinary things, and make them something extraordinary for us now. Truly make them be for us your sustaining and empowering presence in our life. God, we need you. We need you. We confess to you we need you. We need you, Lord. We need you, Jesus. We need you. Convict us today. Show us where we're wrong. Show us where we're off. And give us the courage to repent. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So if y'all want to get your food ready, whatever you have, um, you can eat that now. I have a cracker. So y'all can take and eat. This is the body of Christ broken for you. If y'all want to get your drink ready, I have juice here. Whatever you have, get that ready. Get that out. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ broken or poured out for you on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. Let's continue to worship together through singing.
Thank you all for being uh, with us today and kind of going on this uh, little journey that we got to go on with uh, together uh, today. So um, I know that we've got lots to praise God for. We've got lots to protest here in our world. And I just encourage you guys to keep clinging to Jesus this week. Keep seeking Him. Create and carve out space for prayer, for connection, for worship. Um, reach out to one another. Be intentional about connecting with each other. Send text messages. Make phone calls. Um, get together in safe ways, and let's continue to press into Jesus and, and press uh, into one another as well uh, this week. So if y'all prepare your hearts for the benediction, may the love of God the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Go in God's peace. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time.